I've talked about the solar on the side system on this trailer. So today, we're going to go and put a Renogy panel, which is right there. This is a Renogy suitcase panel, the 200 watt version, which comes with a solar charge controller, which the trailer is severely lacking. We're going to put it on the battery and see what it looks like. Welcome to Unplugged, off-grid gear reviews, RV life, van life, overlanding. Appreciate you guys joining the channel today. So I've talked in previous videos about this solar on the side system because I was told when I bought this trailer that all you had to do was plug in a solar panel. This is, called, this is what's called an, uh, an SAE connector. And I was told you just plug in a solar panel and it's rated for 20 amps which roughly 20 amps is about up to a 400 watt solar panel. And you just plug that in and go, and it'll keep your battery charged. The part they didn't tell me was that there is no solar charge controller built into this system. If you go to solaronthesside.com, it clearly states that you have to plug in a panel and a solar charge controller. So the salesman at the RV shop where I bought this was wrong. Now, in reality, I called him about it and asked him, and he's like, well, that's just what the Forest River rep told us. So either, either the Forest River rep was wrong, or they didn't get all their information, or they got their facts mixed up anyway. I don't think there was any ill intent. I don't think there was any malicious intent. He wasn't lying to me. I've talked to him a couple times since I bought this. He's been really willing to answer my questions and whatnot. So I just think it was a mistake they made. Okay, let's move on. So today, I'm going to plug up this solar panel, and I'll unbox it here in a second for you guys. We're going to plug it into this BioInno 100 amp hour battery. It's a marine battery, lithium iron phosphate, which is the best chemistry of battery that you can buy right now. They're more expensive, but they're lighter weight, and they last much, much longer than like an AGM or a lead acid battery. So you get what you pay for. In other words, you spend a little bit more money today, it's going to last you much longer, and it's not going to be as heavy in your RV trailer or van setup or wherever you want to put wherever you need to put a battery big enough for 100 amp hours it's going to uh it's going to be a, a much more long-term investment even though it is a little bit more expensive well it can be a lot more expensive depending on which brand you buy this is about a 700 dollars battery you can get a cheap chinese battery 100 amp hour battery on amazon for about three to four hundred bucks maybe a little bit less than that sometimes this battery is built better it's going to last you for more charge cycles etc etc so it's just a better overall investment better quality battery so let's set up the renergy panel and i'll show you guys what it looks like when i get it set up and then we'll go from there All right, so that's uh, obviously that's a time lapse, but you know it only takes like a minute to set up. It doesn't really take that long at all. So here, let's look at the the panel here. This is the panel suitcase. They make a 100 watt version of this. This is the 200 watt version. So it should pull in. There's the uh, information on it right there. It should pull in about. Up to about 10 or 11 amps in optimal sun and perfect sunlight. You know, it's not you're not going to get perfect sunlight all, all day long, but you know you can get it pretty regularly. So, well, sometimes you can. So here's the solar charge controller that's built in. This is a Voyager solar charge controller, 12 volt, 20 amp. Now, 20 amp is good because the trailer is also wired for 20 amp. But I'm not plugging into the solar on, on the side today, and I'll explain why here in a second. But this thing's built in. Now, the one thing I don't like about it. It came with these screws, like right here, these small nuts and bolts right here. And you can see this one's missing and this one's missing. So when I got it, this one and this one had, this, these three had fallen out, so the, the controller was hanging off. I found the screws, screws in the bottom of the, of the plate there and I put them back on, but this one's fallen out again. So these screws aren't like, they don't have lock washers or locking mechanisms or, or like, uh, uh, like lock nuts or whatever they're called. So they come out too easily. So you, you're probably gonna wanna replace those screws so that this thing's not flopping around. But that's just an FYI, I should say. So it comes out like this. It has these MC4 connectors on it and, it, and it comes with all of this. And then on the, and then it has this, 
So you can actually plug this into a different system if you already have a different system set up. If you ha I don't have with me today an MC4 to SAE connection. Otherwise, I could plug this directly in here. And since it's got the built-in charge controller in the panel, we would be good to go. But I don't have... I don't have an adapter today, so I'm going to have to build one, which is not a problem. And we'll, uh, we'll look at that next time. But it also comes with this cable here that you plug in, and then it's got these alligator clips on the, on, the, on the back of it. So I'm just going to plug it directly into the battery. This battery's been sitting here for two or three weeks. It is turned off on the trailer. I have the battery disconnected on the trailer, so there's nothing drawing on it. So it's just been sitting here. But I don't have it in a box. I need to put a battery box on it. I just don't have it yet. All right, so I just connected those directly to the battery, and you can see it's now pulling in 13.3 volts. Get a little bit closer to that because it's dark out here. So it's pulling 13.3 volts. The sun is right there right now. Of course, it's behind the clouds. 13.3 volts. I can hit this button here, and it'll tell me it's pulling in 3.9 amps at the moment. Four amps right there. As the sun comes out from the clouds, which is happening right now, it'll go up, obviously. And then you can hit this button again, and it'll show you the amp hours. Now, the amp hours is zero right now because we just plugged it in. So if I come back in an hour or a couple hours, it'll tell me how many amp hours it's pulled down since it's been sitting here. And then we push that again. We go back to voltage. You can go in here and set your battery type. Right there, you see that 14.4 volts is what it's set at. LifePo 4, I can change that. It's got... LTD, uh, LTO, gel, AGM, wet cell, uh, calcium, lithium ion, and back to LifePo4. So it'll, it'll charge any of these batteries, these types of battery chemistry. It's important to set your battery chemistry for whatever battery you have. Uh, it also tells you what your current battery is at. You can see, hopefully you can see that in the camera right there. The green light is on three. So this is your battery level right here with four LEDs. And the green light's currently lit up on LED number three. So it's about 75 to 80% charge, something like that. It probably won't turn on the top light till it goes to almost 95 or 100% charge, I, I'm guessing. But now I can let this sit here and charge my battery. And I can even turn the battery back on and go ahead and turn the fridge on. So I can let, because I, uh, when I first put this battery on the trailer, I turned the fridge on. Well, there's a battery disconnect. So once you turn the battery disconnect, everything in the trailer that is run by the battery comes on, including the refrigerator, which is 12 volts. So when I did that the first time, I let it run. Now this battery has a built-in BMS, what's called a battery management system. So it won't, so once it gets down to a certain charge, it shuts itself off to keep from damaging the cells in the battery. So I let it run for about two days after connecting the battery to the trailer and it died about 36 or 40 hours into it. It didn't quite run two days. Now that was during the day, overnight and during the day again. And I did not have a solar panel on it at all. So I just had the battery running with the refrigerator and it was hot during the day and not so hot at night. That's why that makes a difference. But the battery lasted almost two days by itself with nothing else charging the battery with no external shore power with no solar panel anything so i'm confident that right now i could probably run my trailer indefinitely on this 200 watt panel which is pulling in about four amps right now of course the sun is behind the clouds still and it will charge my battery my 100 amp hour battery and i could probably run the fridge indefinitely now it's going to matter sometimes if you if you have cloudy days if you have not as much sun coming out uh, if you're behind a tree, okay, obviously you won't be able to do it that way. So you got to make sure you're an optimal sun to do that. But it'll be a cool experiment to see how that's done. So thanks for watching today, guys. Put a, uh, put a comment below if you have any questions or anything about this video, about this product. There will be a link to this product in the description below. And uh, special thanks to Renogy for allowing me to review this product. This thing's very light and easy to carry around, so I plan to use it in several videos upcoming. Catch you next time.